My name is Gennaro Fazio, and I am a uh, rootstock breeder, a research geneticist at the uh, uh, Plant Genetic Resources Unit in Geneva, New York, which is also the location where the Geneva rootstocks have been developed uh, at Cornell University. And uh, today I will speak about uh, the uh, current uh, uses of uh, Geneva rootstocks in in um, in the United States and around the world, and, and uh, uh, the changes that they're uh, that are occurring and have occurred in the past ten years in rootstock production and uh, and utilization. Uh, and I will also touch on on uh, a uh, a few other things that are important for uh, uh, consideration when planting a rootstock. So. Uh, that's me. Let let us begin. So um, <clears throat> I'm grateful for the opportunity uh, to present uh, to give this uh, short presentation about the Geneva rootstocks and uh, what's going on in the U.S. Um, with regards to uh, implementation and research, but also a little bit around the world. Um, the Geneva rootstocks, as they we uh, they come from a uh, place in the in the northern part of the U.S. So here it is, uh, the state of New York, New York City is right here, and Geneva is right here next to Lake Ontario. We, uh, on top of you know being uh, having the Geneva rootstocks, we also have the largest collection of different apples in the world. So we have about uh, 7,000 different uh, different types of apples that, that we maintain uh, for the benefit of the world. And uh, this is, you know, the uh, the core of the Geneva breeding program. Here's Terence Robinson uh, and Herb Winkle and Jim Cummins, who started the uh, the, the whole program, and then uh, some of my technicians that have participated. And um, there are a lot of uh, res resources uh, for Geneva rootstocks in uh, on on the web. And so, if you type uh, Geneva apple rootstocks in the search engine, you will find a lot of material available to you. Um, and I just want to point out a little bit of an historical perspective on how long it takes to uh, to breed apple rootstocks. Uh, so this this breeding program started in 1968. I was born in 1968, so in, you know that tells you uh, that uh, the evaluation and the breeding takes a long time because uh, you have to have things in the field for a long time in order to find out what is best. So, and you know, the beginning, we had a few releases uh, uh, right here in the 1990s and, and early 2000, and then more recently we released uh, 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 several rootstocks that uh, we will talk about in a few minutes. But the core of the prog program was, uh, the, the fo focus was disease resistance, Fire blight, phytophthora, and productivity, and and dwarfing. So, um, what does a rootstock do? What's what's the role of a rootstock in in the uh, uh, in the field in an orchard? And as you can see, it, it does a lot. And we're learning that uh, about how much more uh, rootstocks can do for for us. For example. You know, it modifies the architecture of the tree. The, you know, you have root penetration in, and uh, exploration of the soil. You also have uh, uh, the absorption of water and uh, tolerance to drought situations. It resists infections. So there are a lot of things that the roots, uh, rootstock uh, does in order to make the uh, orchard more uh, sustainable and more productive. Um, so this is many, many years ago. You know, if you remember the big trees and, and things and the ladders and, and that we had to use. And then this is now uh, where uh, most of the new uh, plantations of apple or, or uh, are, uh, are made so that uh, 
they're very precise spacing, very precise crop load, and uh, which gives uh, higher fruit quality and and uh, and better pack out and more, more money to the grower. So um, and all those benefits uh, have been able to uh, you know the, this transition from these large trees that are unproductive, like uh, uh, were able to. Uh, be performed uh, because of the rootstock. Imagine these two trees were planted at the same time. One does not have, uh, you know, does not have the productivity genes, and the other one does. And uh, and this is this is uh, what the rootstocks have done and are continuing to do. And so, I say always, we want to produce fruits and not a uh, wood. And uh, what I've noticed is that many of the rootstocks that have been around, uh, you know, with the exception of a nine and B9, there was a lot of partition towards producing uh, wood and, and, and other things instead of producing fruit. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the rootstocks that uh, uh, have been commercialized, at least in the U.S. and, and, uh, and around the world. Um, so we have G202. It's uh, uh, I think you have it uh, there in Uruguay. It, it, it is uh, uh, similar to M26, very pre precocious and productive. It's resistant to the woolly apple aphid and uh, and it's uh, tolerant to uh, replant. It's also a good rootstock for a weaker uh, variety. So you know, depending on what you do with it, uh, uh, you know, if if you have a vigorous variety, you can always do a 2D system with a, a planar view, uh, which probably Nicola Della Beta has, has spoken about. Uh, the next one that has been uh, uh, widely planted here in uh, uh, in the United States is G41. It is really the replacement for M9 because it has uh, the uh, similar vigor to M9, uh, but uh, it's more efficient than M9. It's more productive than M9, and we've seen that in many, many uh, field trials, about 30 field trials that we've had in, in, the, in the US. And also, we see it in the real orchard. We've produced uh, um, close to maybe 20 million uh, rootstocks on G4, uh, for G41. Um, in in the U.S. Uh, and uh, it's cold. It's it's resistant to um, a cold climate. It's it's also uh, uh, extremely resistant to the uh, fire blight and replant. Uh, so um, it's been a good rootstock for 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 the U.S. industry. Um, <clears throat> We have also G935 that has been uh, 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 utilized in many different ways. Uh, it, and uh, G935 is interesting because um, one of the other things that it provides to the uh, to the tree, you know, other than being very productive and and uh, and so on and so forth, it it is uh, it modifies the the branch angles. And so it's it makes the the uh, the, the tree uh, more productive by being more open, um, and uh, uh, it is not uh, resistant to the woolly aphid, but it is uh, very uh, tolerant to replant disease. The next one is G213, uh, which you may have heard about because it's it's being widely produced in. In uh, in Brazil, uh, north of, north of where you are, and it has a vigor similar to M9 Pedrum 2. It's uh, highly yield efficient, uh, about usually 100 125 percent of the production of of uh, uh, M9. Good precocity, and uh, one of the things that that it does, it it uh, allows the plant or the the grafted tree to produce more branches. But also, it, uh, reduce, it reduces the requirement of, uh, uh, co of the, you know, the cold 
requirement that uh, that is needed. Um, and then you know here is a uh, a very nice uh, plantation of uh, of G two thirteen. I think this is this is in Bacaria, uh, and uh, uh, where M nine on one side has not filled the space, and uh, G two thirteen has, and and it shows the good production uh, in fresh ground. This is another one that in the U.S. it's it's uh, uh, it's G two fourteen. Uh, you might receive it eventually in uh, in Uruguay and in South America, but it's uh, it has uh, similar qualities to uh, uh, to two thirteen, but uh, it has um, something that's quite a bit different in terms of of uh, the calcium to uh, potassium balance, uh, which uh, some of the newer varieties like Honeycrisp require a potassium calcium balance uh, that allows uh, for the lack of bitter pit. Well, this rootstock has that, and uh, and so it's, it's being utilized um, more and more uh, to uh, for certain certain rootstock applications. Um, I think you have their G814. Um, the, it is precocious and productive. Uh, it has uh, a nice production in the stool bed. Um, and, uh, uh, but it is uh, s sensitive or sus uh, susceptible to uh, uh, some, some viruses and the woolly apolaphid. Um, very resistant to 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 uh, the uh, replant disease, though. So if you can, uh, and the other thing that that uh, G814 does, it makes larger fruit for uh, for gala, for example. So in a uh, we've noticed that in a field, you know, where where gala is important, uh, it can. It can increase the size, the, the medium size of, of the uh, apples, uh, you know, one box size or, or two. Uh, then we have G210. Uh, it is uh, big or similar to N7. So this is a rootstock that you can utilize uh, perhaps um, in, with weaker varieties. Um, or uh, if you wanted to use it uh, as a multi-liter in a multi-liter application, it's uh, resistant to woolly apolaphid and replant disease, and and uh, uh, and it's 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 worked well with uh, organic production uh, and in uh, sandy soils. So um, you can see that all of these rootstocks are somewhat similar in the sense that uh, they are precocious and productive, but somewhat different. In the in some of the uh, nutritional balance and and systems, and so uh, this is another one that uh, uh, will be coming to you hopefully soon, which is G969. Uh, it's uh, resistant. Uh, it you know the vigor is between M26 and and M7. Very highly efficient and tolerant to uh, uh, Phytophthorin and and uh, woolly apolaphid and it, it is showing up to be uh, perhaps the best rootstock for production of Honeycrisp here in the U.S. because of the calcium to potassium balance that, that it has. Um, and we're planting, you know, G969 and some of the others by hundreds of thousands uh, now in the U.S. This is a new plantation that went in 20 in 2018. And it's now in full production, and it's it's uh, really beautiful. Um, and then the the last one that I'm going to talk about is is G890, uh, which has a vigor between M7 and M106. It's it's one of the largest rootstocks that we have. But interesting enough, even though it's it's a bigger rootstock, the efficiency is similar to M9. So you get a lot of a lot more fruit. I mean, it, it really uh, brings that uh, uh, a partition of of the dry matter that that is being produced by by a tree towards fruit, and it's good. Um, it's a good rootstock for 
uh, uh, very weak varieties or uh, tough situations in replant or multi leaders. So, in in uh, you know, with all of these different rootstocks, I used to get uh, a lot of, and I still do, a lot of uh, um, criticism be uh, uh, from uh, from the nursery because they said, "Oh no, we need to, you know, we only want one rootstock and." Uh, it's too many because we cannot make a decision. We need, you know, what is the best? And as as Ali will explain in the next few minutes, I the best is, uh, ha, you know, coming up with the the best solution that uh, deals with all of the, these um, interactions. So you know the 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 cyan variety, the climate, the uh, uh, the you know the the management type and the soil you know different pHs and so on and so forth and so um, our the concept that we have is to to match uh, or to to use um, design rootstocks essentially rootstocks that, that match the the uh, uh, the needs of a specific uh, planting situation. Because by doing that, you can maximize the value of your production. We've seen many situations where, you know, people think about uh, 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 all everything else, and then they they uh, don't use the right rootstock, and it ends uh, ends up costing a lot and a lot of money. So. Uh, our, most of our research and the future research is basically uh, combining the qualities of the rootstock with the qualities of the of, of the cyan variety, and uh, and and matching you know the weaknesses and the strengths of of uh, of each other. Um, and so this is you know the beginning of of our understanding of of what uh, uh, what we're trying to do um, where. We take uh, you know, some of the varieties like Fuji, Gala, Honeycrisp, and we say, okay, what are the weaknesses in Fuji? Okay, uh, Fuji has biennial. Well, we do have rootstocks that are not biennial. Or, uh, you know, uh, what about color, uh, fruit color, and, and things like that? And so, or uh, fruit size. So, um, and all those things that, that we are researching. Um, uh, contribute to money, I mean, real money, either in savings or in increasing quality and, and sales to the, to the grower and also to the consumer. And so, uh, you know, we have the, for example, the resistance of, to uh, Wolia polyphid. Well, you know, that's worth money the, to the increment of, uh, to, uh, in productivity that is, um, also uh, uh, very important for money. And in the US, this has uh, transformed our, um, our industry. So in 2001, 83% of the rootstocks that were being sold were M9 clones, okay? And then a little bit of B9 and, and, and things like that. But in 2019, um, M9 has become the smaller part, one of the smaller rootstocks being being utilized, whereas the Geneva rootstocks have been pretty much overtaken. And they are being applied uh, into many different applications from, you know, v trellis to multi-axis, and uh, they are showing higher productivity, you know, with certain varieties, this is Snapdragon in, in uh, New York, and you can see that, uh, that for example, uh, 257, which we're going to release soon, uh, has said the higher productivity, and this is where uh, M26 is. Okay, so imagine, imagine, imagine that. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have uh, um, applications where the hormones are different. Uh, and and uh, and then uh, we have applications where uh, 
you know, the return to bloom or the uh, the the amount of bloom is important. This is uh, probably work by Tiago that he is, he's already spoken about. We also have, you know, situations with uh, uh, the color and and uh, uh, the fruit quality and how the rootstock can change that quite drastically. And so this is gala, many different types of gala. Oh, well, this is one scion gala, but you know, many different rootstocks. And you can see differences in colors and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I spoke about uh, woolly apple aphids. But what you don't see and what we don't speak much about is, you know, what's going on under underground. You don't see that very much. And this is what I see and what I select and what and what I develop. And this is the much of the research that, that it is going on. You can see that roots are very, very different morphologically and, you know, dynamically and physiologically. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to select the best route uh, uh, for uh, all, you know, basically uh, all the orchards um, in the U.S. and, of course, around the world. And with that, I would like to thank you uh, very much from my team. And uh, this is what we do, rootstock breeding. Thank you very much.